Today we're talking about integral tables and computer algebra systems. At the end of the book, there's a large group of uh, integral tables, the, a couple hundred of them, that you'll be using extensively during this chapter. And also we'll talk a little bit about computer algebra systems that will solve integrals for you as well. And these include uh, calculator-based solvers and websites such as Wolfram Alpha and software tools, for example, uh, Mathematica, which is also made by Wolfram. <coughs> and so uh, one of the things we do with integral tables is that they can either transform a complicated integral into one that we have seen before, or, uh, or perhaps just outright solve it for us. There is not, there, we don't need to always re-derive an, an integral that has already been developed, either by ourselves or somebody else, but we can use these tables as references for, uh, for shortcuts to save ourselves that effort. These integral tables are templates to how several families of integrals are solved. And this sort of analogous to computer programmers who reuse code in their programs or uh, other engineers who use uh, standardized assemblies. We can reuse uh, integrals. <coughs> and in this uh, book, they, in this chapter, they, they give a short, very abbreviated integral table that has uh, 22, 23, you know, 22 integrals in it of the most uh, famous ones. Some of the very basic ones, integral of du is equal to u. It's basically the integral of a constant equals 1 is equal to u. Or, or number 2, which is where k is equal to any number, including 1, you would have k times u. In a sense, uh, Integral 1 is a special case of integral 2. They're closely related. They uh, <coughs> have uh, different types of uh, integral rules. Number 4 and number 5 are our power rule integrals. Number 5 is a special case when n is equal to negative 1. Number 4 is the more general case for when n is equal to any other number except negative 1. We see our trigonometric integrals uh, through uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12, uh, tangent down there, and continues onwards uh, through 13. <coughs> we get our transcendental ones, number 14. Everybody should know number 14. The, we have uh, 15 there. The we have the hyper, hyperbolic functions uh, 16, 17, and through 18 through 22 are trigonometric integrals. And <coughs> these can be actually used as a, as a quick reference for solving them without having to re-derive these. So here's an example. You take one like this. This one would would be difficult to solve by hand unless you've recently solved one of these before. Chances are you don't have the procedure memorized and and most people wouldn't. So you would look it up in an integral table. In which table entry is the most suitable? The, and these uh, the, the entry number is going to vary amongst addition from the uh, 12th to the 13th edition, they changed this, and from the 11th to the 12th, they changed them as well. And for this, here we're looking at uh, the 12th edition. The equation 29, there's actually two equations under 29. That This is the first one, 29a, provides this integral. The 29b, if I remember correctly, is a negative here instead of a positive. And so what you do is you would uh, look at uh, at your problem here and you would see 
we have x, so you could think of it as a 1 times x plus 4. And that gives you an a equals 1. And I'm having trouble writing this. And b equals 4. <coughs> and so you just uh, substitute those in for a and b in this equation. And I, I created a color coding for this slide where the integrals, as they appear out of the table, are in red. The, uh, the integral we're solving is in black. And in blue is our resulting answer after we substitute in. And so what we have in blue here is our final result. You can pause it here to look at the connections between these. You can pause it at any place, actually. Let's take a look at another example here. The, we have square root of 9 minus 4x over x squared. OK, you could probably do an integration by substitution. Uh, it, it might uh, work. It might not. I I'm not, don't think it would, because you're uh, your, D, your du would be in the wrong place. So take a look at our integral tables. The closest match is negative 30. And, you do, and here's our, the formula they give us in number 30 in the table. And notice uh, that there's a categorization of these integrals in the table such as uh, forms involving ax plus b, the uh, in a square minus x square, a square plus x square, and so on, and trigonometric forms as well. There's, uh, they're categorized and sorted, so you can actually look in the general neighborhood and scan through them individually to find the one that most closely matches the one that, that you would need to use. And so for this one, we see a correlation here between uh, a is equal to 9 and uh, and b, uh oh, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, a is, uh, I, I read that backwards, a is equal to negative 4 and b is equal to 9. And just substitute them in. And now, in the case with this one, the answer itself contains an integral. And so you would, uh, you would need to take, uh, take this integral right here and then solve it as a following step. And so we'll go on and look at that. So which integral? in our table is the most suitable one for uh, for solving this. And so you're going to have an x term, you're going to have an a term. Uh, I guess this this 4 could be a, an a, this uh, 9 could be a b perhaps. It's going to be something of that of that resembling form. And so you go and look it up. Integral 29a is our uh, is our most uh, suitable one. And that's uh, bx over uh, x, the square root of ax plus b. And you identify what your a and your x are equal to. I think I'll write that in blue. a is going to be equal to negative 4, and b is going to be equal to a 9. <coughs> and substitute those values in. That's really all you have to do, is just substitute in and and simplify, which I didn't simplify this, but you could. Yeah, negative 4 over 6 is going to be the negative 2 thirds, for example, if you wanted to do that. If it was a definite integral, you would evaluate the for all these x's 
in this uh, in the whole equation from the beginning to the end of that interval. And so here's an, another example. You can try looking this one up. e to the 2t times cosine of 3t. That one resembles uh, equation 115. And in this case, a is equal to 2. We have our we have our 2 down here, and 3 corresponds to our b. And and now we substitute those values in, and we end up in blue here with our answer. And that's all there is to it. There's really not much to it. It's just a matter of finding the right pattern and substituting in. And x uh, times the arc cosine of x, look it up in the table. What's this going to be? It's going to be equation 107. And in red, it's sort of a large one. And it's another one that's recursive in nature, where you're going to be given a, a, a second integral to solve. And in this case, uh, n is equal to 1, and a is equal to 1. <coughs> so, and so we end up substituting in, and that is our new equation. It's also a new integral for us to solve, the integral of x squared over square root of the quantity 1 minus x squared. So let's uh, try that one out. That's equation number 49, and sort of a complicated one. It's one of those trigonometric substitutions, it looks like, because I, I see an arc cosine in there. And in this case, a is equal to 1. So you just substitute a 1 in there for everywhere there would be an A. And that is your answer. It's not pretty. It's uh, they, they can be quite large and stretched out. But the, you will have an exact answer. And you can, of course, evaluate these as a definite integral, too, to find an exact value. Example e, this is this is the hardest one of all of them. And I say e is for extra hard. You have to do a little bit of an algebraic transformation because this doesn't resemble anything that uh, would be in any of the tables. It's a, it's a ratio of our rationals. <coughs> and so the, there'd be an algebraic transformation at first. And because they all have the common denominator, you can break them up into individual summations. I took the one over x, the one over x squared plus one squared, as its own term, and then deal with the x cubed plus x over that quantity, as its own separate integral. And it turns out that when you do that, you can factor out to x so that it's no longer x cubed the plus x, but it's now x times x squared plus 1. And we have a cancellation between the numerator and the denominator. There's two of those in the denominator and one in the numerator. They cancel out. And we're left with the x over x squared plus 1. And that is a better integral. In fact, it, you can solve that one by substitution. The, uh, to uh, basically substituting it for the u equals x squared plus 1. And uh, du is equal to 2x dx. And solving for du, you end up, I mean, solving for dx, you end up with du over 2x. And, uh, and those x's cancel out. And you have uh, 1 half that comes outside. So the... Uh, yeah, I should have wrote a one-half here. So you have one-half the integral of du over u. 
and that's equal to the the natural logarithm of u natural log of u or just natural log of x squared plus 1 once we substitute substitute x is for the x equation in for u and now we have another integral and we can use number 33 to solve this one this integral is actually left over from our very first step of separating out that polynomial and use number 33 that's in red and substitute it in and we end up with our final answer. That's all there is to it. Now this problem was mostly algebraic steps. And so we have a reduction formula. Some integrals require multiple iterations of integration by parts that can they can be simplified by integral tables. These are where you have, let's say, um, a term with a large exponent that's reduced the, using an integration table. So sine, uh, sine to the fifth power of 2x, the dx, that integral, it shows here that sine can be of any power of n. So yeah, you could do integration by parts, but they, they've already done the work for you. You uh, you just do the substitution of 5 in for n, and now you have a sine to the fourth times ax, or 2x, times cosine of 2x over uh, 5 times 2, which is 10. And then over here you have n minus 1, so you're going to have 4 over 5. And this is going to be sine to the third power of ax. And then to solve this part, the you would use the same rule again. You would apply this uh, the same integral a, a second time. And so this red is our identity copied from the first slide substituting in for n equals 5 and a equals 2 we got this equation and plus 4 fifths sine cube 2x that's basic this equation in blue in light blue is basically what we had done on the previous on the previous slide that I spoke through verbally and now we have to solve this uh, this integral right here And that's uh, by applying the same table is equal to sine square of 2x cosine 2x over 6. Just substituting in for n and a plus 2 thirds the sine of 2x. Sine of 2x is equal to negative 1 half cosine of x. It's a substitution integral where u, u is equal to uh, 2x and du is equal to 2 dx and so when you solve for dx you get du over 2 that's why there's a, a 2 in the denominator 1 half and now just substitute each of these in the, replace this sine of 2x with the 1 half cosine of 2x and uh, right there that's how that's how we get that's how we get uh, the integral uh, right here. And then substitute that into our original integral, our original solution, which is, which is right here that's encompassing the whole thing. <coughs> and that would be our entire complete answer you would, of course, uh, simplify this by multiplying 2 thirds times negative 1 half and then multiplying each of these terms by 4 fifths to, to come up with a uh, 
so that way you don't have to have parentheses anymore. Just multiply those constant terms out, and, and you'd have it. You'd be at the final answer. That's pretty cool. And that is exactly what I did here. I multiplied out on this right-hand side here, 8 over 30 is basically 4 fifths times 2 thirds times uh, negative 1 half. And uh, yeah, I could have simplified this further, I guess, uh, 4 over 15, the 2 over 15, but I didn't, so what? Not a big deal. Some uh, integrals are uh, not readily integrable into simple functions. Uh, this is not a complete list, it's a partial list. Uh, these are integrals that are very, very difficult to evaluate. The, um, there's a couple that are described in the book, uh, like one is the error function, ERF is how it's abbreviated, that uh, is actually equal to the 2 over square root of pi. That's not so bad so far, but now you times the integral from from 0 to x. Okay, now you're like, this is getting bad now. e to the negative t squared dt. That is a, a, a really, really bad integral. It, uh, it actually is an integral that's uh, key in forming the normal distribution in statistics. The, you, you can directly use this integral to, uh, to, to draw a normal, the, the distribution of the normal bell curve, but it is, uh, it is very difficult to evaluate this symbolically. You'd need a numerical approach to, to solving integrals like these where you would use solvers like computer algebra systems. They would basically, they would do a numerical approximation using Riemann sums to, uh, to come up with the answer. Some tools will come up with, uh, with symbolic answers if they can. Mathematic is particularly talented for that for the integral of x squared from 0 to 5, they actually give you a fraction, 125 over 3. And uh, some of the TI calculators aren't quite that far along yet. Uh, most of them are, but some aren't. They may not necessarily give you a, a rational expression, but will express it as a, uh, as a decimal number particularly in a case where it might be off by by one on a very distant decimal point can can cause it to not give you a rational result and so those are uh, that that those are ways you can actually solve the for numerical values in definite integrals these are definite integrals here to find uh, to find really close approximations or perhaps exact values. These kinds of tools are good to use because they're, they often work very, very fast. Mathematica is expensive. It's, it can, depending on if you're a student or, or a corporation, it can run from 150 up to, up to over a thousand dollars, depending on what type of license you get. <coughs> so, it's not it's not affordable to most, but if you own a Raspberry Pi, you do get a copy of Mathematica for free. So computer engineers uh, enjoy this. Uh, you can buy a Raspberry Pi for 30 bucks and get a copy of Mathematica. Another approach is uh, WolframAlpha.com. That uh, that will do a uh, solution of integrals the, based on uh, human language input into their website. If you haven't used Wolfram Alpha, you should. It's, uh, it's definitely raising the bar on calculus courses and 
in helping us by, by establishing these tools to you gives us the opportunity to make our courses more challenging because you have access to this now. You have access to calculators that do these integrals, which means that we can approach even more challenging problems. So you're almost expected to know how to do this. Uh, so anyway, have fun. Uh, look through some of the problems in the back of the chapter for other types of integral tables, types of problems. If you if you are one of those people out there that are watching this that are not in any of the classes in our program, well, the you can actually buy books that have integral tables, such as the CRC Handbook, that uh, which is published by Chemical Rubber Company, and they often have a, a very complete integral table in their books. And they can be older editions, are still very thorough, and can be bought for very reasonable prices on used bookstores or on online booksellers. So if you have nothing else, uh, those work, and, and they tend to be quite affordable. So have fun with this. I'll see you soon.